Amen. So we're going to we're going to get ready and, and, and jump into the word. Hallelujah. Amen. And be inspired and receive our instruction from the word of God. Hallelujah. I, I pray that you all come for the word. Amen. Because it is the, the direction and the guidepost for our lives. Amen. Could you find yourself standing on your feet as you find the book of Acts chapter two? The book of Acts chapter two. As we prepare, amen, our hearts and our minds to read the word of God, to be inspired in our devotion unto him. And then move into our liturgy, our, our, our um, tradition with authority of communion. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. We're not going to go right into communion. We're going to do communion afterwards. But... Uh, Acts chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading at verse 15. And this is the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down upon the earth and fell down upon all people. And everybody that was there was filled with the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and as they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in other languages that they did not all understand. They were not educated or taught or brought up or raised to know these different languages. And, and, and they began to pour out these different languages. And, and the miracle was a pouring out, but also the miracle was that they understood and they heard each other. Amen. Speaking in a foreign language, but they understood in their own language. They knew what was going on. There was a tongues and interpret, interpretation of tongues that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And, 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 and so everybody walking around and to the and to the casual observer, it may look like they're drunk. This is where we get some of the ideas of being drunk in the spirit. It, it, that was the perception of the, of the untransformed and unrenewed looking at the renewed doing what we do for Jesus. Amen. And so they saw them and they said, you know, they, uh, they thought they were drunk with wine because they're speaking all these crazy languages and maybe they, they staggered a little bit. Amen. Maybe they, 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 they weebled and wobbled a little bit. Amen. As they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit get on you. Sometimes, you, 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 you know what I'm saying, you, you may act a little different. Amen. I know not everybody believes that. Amen. But my opinion is informed by the scripture. Amen. And so we're going to look at verse um, 15, and it says, um, this is Peter responding to them. He says, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old um, men shall see shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in these days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of, and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the filling of your spirit that transforms us and shifts us and changes us and, 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 and make us into a whole new person that takes us through a metamorphosis that, that, that instantly, hallelujah, instant automatically, instant, instantaneously metamorph us and change us into a different person that put your spirit on the inside of us and cause us to, for the first time in our existence to react and respond to the power and the life of your spirit on the inside of us called the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the life of the Spirit that's on the inside of us that calls us to, to, to respond properly with love with those who also bear this same life. Father, we thank you that the life of the Spirit tears down all barriers of, of, of race, of, of ethnicity, of, of, of status and, 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 and prominence in the world, uh, the lows and the highs of life, but we are connected to, make, to be one new man in Christ. Father, we thank you that this is the reality of your church. This is the reality of what you came to do as your word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
So, Father, help us to continue to walk in this love and action and be your hands, your feet, your voice, your eyes, your ears amongst the living while we preach the gospel and make a mark on this generation that cannot be erased. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Amen. And so the scripture... Um, um, is telling us about the day of Pentecost that we, that we read here. And um, they were gathered in obedience unto the word of God um, from Christ himself. And when Jesus told them to go and to tarry in Jerusalem till the spirit of God comes upon you. Amen. That you go and you wait there for the spirit of God. And as they were there waiting for the spirit of God, or what we call tarrying, some of you may have heard and come from the old time Pentecostal church, amen, where you tarried for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and sometimes they just take you over to a, a back room and, uh, and they just say to say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And they say, they say, 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 thank you, Jesus. Amen. And they'll say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And Jesus, thank you, Jesus. So to America. Amen. We just keep on just, amen, until you begin to speak with tongues as they so understood it. Amen. And, 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 and um, there are different um, practices and the different ways of, of, of understanding being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, now I, I'll say that there are people who are, everyone who is saved is filled with the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every Christian is filled with the Spirit. Amen. The Bible didn't say that tongues was the only way to evidence. The Bible says that um, sometimes you're going to sing to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hallelujah, as evidence of being filled with the Spirit, the continual, amen, constant being filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. But, but praying in tongues and speaking in tongues is a primary way of expressing being filled with the Spirit publicly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't come to talk about being filled with the Spirit, but, you know, we come to talk about, and the Word became flesh yes. and lived out prophecy. And the word became flesh and lived out prophecy. That Jesus is the word of God that dawned sinful flesh that he might live out prophecy. See, it would have been suffice for Christ to come into the world and manifest himself as the, the word of God and die for our sin. That would have been suffice. Had not there been one scripture to tie that action to, had there not been any scripture to tie that behavior to, it could have taken place and come and gone and we'd have had no record of, of God prophesying or giving us record or notification of this activity going to take place. But God, for our sake, had it written hundreds of years before the manifestation of this word, what over a thousand years? He had it journaled for our sake. It been written did not elevate Christ to a higher status, but it gave us notification. Amen. That we may know Him and love Him and serve Him. Prophecy is for us to be educated beforehand. Glory to God. And God made his knowledge and his understanding so known beforehand in what we call prophecy. And so we believe this Bible, not because it's the Bible, but because of the prophecy. The prophetic elements of the scripture is what legitimizes the scripture. And I tell you that this has been searched, overlooked, over, investigated, combed through by, by some of the most intelligent, I put my little air quotes up there, the bunny ears, and intelligent minds, amen, over the ages. And they come up short, woefully short. Or um, some archaeological dig will, 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 find a little button or, you know, with the name of, of, of a king of Israel, you find King David, you know, and, and, and find, you know, that um, little parts of stuff that, that, that confirm the scripture and the, the layout of the land and people existed at the same time and that they actually knew each other, just like the Bible said. The purpose of the word becoming flesh 
is not to elevate the word in God's eyes. Amen. It is to elevate the word in the eyes of us. This is why you need to know your Bible. See? Because if you don't know your Bible, you can't properly elevate God. You can't put him in the place as God that he belongs as God. Amen. This is why that you need to make sure that your life is informed by the holy text so that you can properly esteem the things that God has called you to esteem and shun the things God has called you to shun. Amen. How shall a young man correct his ways? By keeping your word. See, and so God gave us his wisdom in advance. He informed us ahead of time with prophecy. And then he sent his word. And his word became flesh and dwelt among us. But then his word was caught up to heaven. And he left us his spirit. And his spirit living inside of us is the evidence of that word come to pass. Ooh, yeah. That's why the apostle was saying, look on me. I'm going to manifest evidence that Jesus is Lord. Amen. My life is going to point back to the resurrection. I, I want you to understand that's where your life should be pointing, yeah. back to the resurrection and toward the second coming. Because of this unto that. Amen. All right, all right. So, um, and so, so the word became flesh. I, I, I was talking to Elder Mark before I got out of here. I said, man, I, I can see myself blowing it already. It's hard for me to get into stuff like this and, you know, golly, stay on the time limit. Amen. I can't, beloved. I can't. I got to have liturgy to keep. Most love. We talked about the most loving thing we could ever do. Amen. Is, is give someone the truth. And from that. We want to be the most loving church ever. But it's all going to be based upon, upon, it must be, it must originate from the truth. It must end and find its destiny in truth. Because you can be in truth, of course, and be but we must have our origin and destiny found in the truth. And the most important thing that we have to do as a church, this is the day of Pentecost, ministering the word of God to people of all nations, of, of all people, amen, of all kindred, of all kinds. This is Peter, amen, looking at, looking at all the worlds, all the nations of the world, amen, and, 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 and giving the word became and lived out prophecy. The word became, this is what he's had, have, having them to see. He's pointing them to Jesus and he's pointing them to prophecy. He says, look at the prophecy. And the word became flesh and lived out this prophecy. Now you need to put on the word and live out prophecy. The word is not removed from the earth. The word now lives in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so now the hope of, of, of a generation, the hope of the people is in us putting on this word. Us allowing this word to become flesh through us. And us live out prophecy as the obedient soldiers and sons and daughters of the scripture. That's the hope. The spirit of God poured out on us. For us to be able to do this. All right. So. Uh, Peter, as he was spoke, speaking unto
multi-ethnic church. One of the reasons why we want to have a multi-ethnic church. Amen. Because we, we want to represent the church that Jesus died for. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If somebody telling you you're going to heaven because you're black, because you're white, because you're Hispanic, because you're Asian, because you're whatever, they lying to you. Come on now. Right. Amen. Don't find any hope in that. Amen. Your hope must be in the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. In the word alone. Sola scripturis. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So um, um, I'm, I'm just going to give you three keys because of, of time. I'm, I'm going to shorten everything. Give you three keys to live. You got to get this word in you. Amen. No. Key number one is get the word in you. Give you a little hint where I was going with that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you have to get the word. If the word ain't in you, you ain't giving God nothing to work with. Put your ideas, your intuition, your intellect. He, I mean, he don't want nothing to be the inspired reason for what you do. Amen. He want his word to be the reason why you do what you do. The reason why I, I, I married my wife was because of the word. Hey, I do. <laughs> the reason why I raised my kids the way I raised my kids was because of the word. Amen. I don't give two cents about common culture. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care nothing about latest and greatest. I, I mean, I, I don't care at all. Growing up, my kids thought the Goodwill was Walmart. Amen. That was, that was an advance. We're going to Walmart? Yep. Mm hmm. Hallelujah. Let's see what they got in there today. <laughs> we can't raise children with a love for, for this plane of existence and expect them at, at, a, at, a, at a point in their life where their brain's not even developed enough to make sound decisions, not, not consistently anyway. And, and, and we, haven't, we haven't discipled them in our homes. We haven't given them Bible studies. Amen. We haven't given them devotion. We haven't given them the word. We have not put how do we expect him to leave this place and go and live for Jesus? Come on, That's true. We, we got to have our existence defined by the word of God. What we honor, what we regard, what we consider to be true and right must come from the word of God. If you're regarding anything else, you will be in sin. You may not be in sin right now. But this culture, this world, this entire plan of existence is meant to pull you into sin. And so you can't, you, look, you, you can't give any odes to it. You can't regard it. You can't re re respect it. Amen. You, you, you can't try to mix in and mingle with it. You have to learn how to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And, and, and do just enough to keep to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love our neighbor as ourself. Yes. And now, our actions will be informed by the word. Be structured by the word as we go forth to do God's will. Because it is the word that has the power to destroy your sin. Was that Hebrews 12? It says, for the word of God is, Hebrews 5, quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Piercing even to dividing asunder of the joint in the spirit. See, it's the word of God that has to get in us and cut and slice and chop away at our fleshliness and our fleshliness and our own self, our own ambition and dreams and desires. And chop away at it. Amen. Until you are conformed to the image and likeness of Christ. Amen. And we have to continue to, to model this in our own lives and promote this in the lives of our families. Yes. Structure our, our lives around producing and reproducing what the Bible tells us we're supposed to be. Amen. I'm telling you that if it's, it, it, it's, it is not worth Producing if it's not worth reproducing. Amen. If you don't want that 
in the life of your family, your house, your children, don't produce it. If it ain't worth reproducing. Because we're to go into all the world and make disciples of the nations. So we structure. And, from, and it's hard. It gets harder. The, the longer we live, the harder it gets. Because evil is, is growing. And, and, and it's attacking from, from different angles and, and, and in different regions and different ways. And it, it's growing in its capacity and it's a level of aggression. But, but my Bible tells me, man, the more they were afflicted, the more they grew. That was the Hebrews in captivity. And I'm telling you, you can counter the afflictions of this world by growing in Christ. You got to get this word in you. If you're going to live out, if you're going to live out the word of God, you got to get the word of God in you. Watch this. Hebrews, um, not Hebrews, Revelation 12, um, 11 tells, says, and they love not their lives. Even unto death. Amen. See, they got the word in them. And that word in them chopped away, beat away. It, 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 it caused the, the, all the world that was in them to be dissipated until they didn't love their own lives. Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, first deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Cross, and then follow after me. The, the, the pain and pleasure of following Christ. The pain of having your cross. The pleasure of following him. Amen. And so we, we, we cannot. We, we cannot um, love our own lives. And, and love this, this world. And, 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 and love you know, what God has given us. And esteem that so highly. That we can't lose it all. Give it all up in a heartbeat. Well, people will never even know that, that how far, you, far you've fallen from to be where you are as you honor Christ. Because we're not here for social economical status representation. We're not here to say that, hi, yes, you need to act middle class like me and you need to speak this way and dress this way and act this way and drive this car, live in this community. No, 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 now God loves you. Uh, some of that mess got into the church. Right. Where we started believing that people who lived in bigger houses was loved, was loved more by God. Right. People who had newer cars were loved more by God. They dealt with that mess in, in the Bible too. Come on, Bishop. That's not saying God loves you more than anybody else. Right. He that gave up his own son had his son crucified. That's how he showed Jesus. He shared love with Jesus. And we should be saying, I'm crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not me, but Christ in me. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, our, our, our. Love our lives. Yes. You're not going to get the word of God in you loving your life. There's not enough room for you and the word. Those two go together. So you can't be living your best life and into the word and get ministered to by the word. Amen. There's a misery that comes with it. But we don't focus on the misery. We focus on the majesty. See we see Jesus do the cross and despise set before us. Misery involved in yeah. I say, man, look here. If you don't part. What are you gonna do on Friday if you don't go? If you don't drink. If you ain't in the club, what are you going to do? I stayed home. I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't chance it. I, 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 I stayed home. I stayed, matter of fact, I didn't stay home. I stayed on my ship. I was in the Navy. I was on a ship. And, my, and matter of fact, I barely even left my rack 
Hey Amen. I, I stayed in the bed and just read my Bible. Bored to death. Man. Bored. So that when I got out that rack, I had a Amen. Preaching and prophesying to everybody around me. Amen. Casting out devil's healing. Amen. Flowing in the gifts of the spirit. Amen. But the process, I'm telling you that, that you, you're not going to be able to get the word in you and focus on you. This is why this mess that's going around now don't work. It, it, it won't work. We call this sacrifice to live like Christ. And if you can't lose everything you have in a heart and still serve God, I, I, I can't unsave you. But I will call into question the legitimacy of your conversion. I ain't saying that you can't be sad. I mean, we'll be sad. I mean, you know, man, one mistake, you know. Well, Jerome, guess who's coming to dinner? Amen. <laughs> I'm sure there are a few houses I could, you know, make my way to, but I love to make my way to my own. Praise the Lord. So you got, you got love not your life. You have to get the spirit on you and love not the world. When they were back in the Holy Spirit, boom, their love for the world dissipated. People want to say, that, oh, I'm baptized in this very yeah, but you don't love the world? It's not purging you and, and, and cleansing you. The purpose of the baptism of the spirit, you know, the evidence is for um, showing the confirmation of the word of God coming to pass but there's an evidence in your life called the fruit of the spirit and if you're back the spirit you ought to be showing fruit of his spirit amen, amen. you have to get the spirit on you amen. and love not the world um, 1 John 2.15 says love not the world neither the things that are in the world See, it tells us to love not the world. And I know that I'm, I'm, I'm beating a drum and, and, and um, several past messages and, and just, you know, rehashing things. That's not lost on me. But you know what? The church to learn how to get a word and stick with it. Yeah. Every, everything ain't just like so quick and, you know, and easy. And you got to fire promises and everything. You come out, I got it, I got it. And you ain't got nothing. But pride and arrogance that make right. you think you're somebody when you ain't nobody. Right. But we need to learn how to flesh. Yeah. Amen. We need to get the spirit out of us until we get that taste out of our mouth. Some of y'all don't know, if know what I'm talking about, but if you, if you ever had a taste yeah. of something that, that got a hold of you, only the Holy Ghost can take that taste out of your mouth. Amen. And when, you, when you start, when, when, you, when you, oh Lord, go on. I can't, see, I have to go back to 25, 26, almost 30 years and talk about the last time I did. Loves their own. Amen. Preaching for you. With you and you're fine with the world, then you catch it because you may be worldly. For which Jesus rebuked the church in the book of Revelation, himself rebuked the church, especially and worldly. And if, if you want to dress a certain style and look a certain way so that the world will be impressed with you, and what you better watch your heart. If you wanna if you wanna drive a certain car to the world, be like, man, look at you. Jesus did none of those things. You know, look at the donkey he right boy, look at And 
and we try to make our, our look, we're not trying to impress the world. Right. You would not impress the world out of sin. Your prosperity will not cause them. Like this thing with Kanye West, everybody going crazy because he has some ch church day, whatever he's doing. Look here, that mess. Mess. If I'm a minister in that church, I'm so offended. I'm offended. I don't get offended easy. But if you let that joke again. Boy, I ain't going to say preach the gospel. Get up, give a speech, and then just say what he wants people. Go to church for Exhort the people. You got a lot of people, and you them get on TV. Oh my God. We think, if we think Kanye West, West will get people saved, we are. Or any other. Somebody else, I just can't remember who they were. Got, you know, and I'm forced to believe me. I, I want to Jesus and sit there. Who need to be in the church and learn this is the Bible. This is the Just because you've been around the church don't mean nothing. That's right. Don't don't fall for that mess. Yeah. Don't 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 get involved with it. Oh yeah, Kanye, wherever I I I pray. Look, let me. I want you to walk with. Me. I pray he has a genuine conversion. Amen. But the Bible says don't lift. That's right. That's right. See that's. that's right. They'd be lied. Right, right. And the devil comes in and get a hold of them. So you said you're not doing them any fa um, favor. Yeah. So if you want to set up and say, "Hey, I want you to give your story of your conversion," man, I, I'd be for that. You ain't got to tell us all your. We know you was jacked up. You ain't got to tell us. But but what? What? I want to know. You know all the stuff you did while you was listening. I want to know the point of your conversion. Who talked to you? What did they say? How do you know you're saved now? What makes you believe you're a Christian? And what are you willing to do to show fruit of salvation? So I'm not against um, Kanye or his confession. I don't want to conclude it from what I said. I pray he is and had a legitimate you know, conversion. But last I heard Snoop Dogg I heard it was Snoop Dogg too. Oh Amen. Well, it was Snoop Dogg first, before him, and yeah, he had. Didn't he have... Boy, that's a... yeah. I'd rather buy a gospel album with me singing on it, <laughs> crooning, going up, hey, go... I'm going up a yonder. To be with my love. I, I would enjoy that infinitely more. <laughs> infinitely more than ungodly, un false, say anything about my God. And, and we can't fall for that mess. Can't fall for it. And, and people talk about it around you. Just, just act uninformed on it. No opinion. Hey, well, I pray. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I hope she got right with God. Because I know a couple of them that really did get saved. Right, right. Yeah. You know, there's no... Yeah. And... I say.
You got to get the word in you. You got to get the spirit on you. And you got to get the saints around you. Amen. See, if you're going to live out this word, you're not going to. God ain't called no long rangers. Amen. You got to have that word in you. You got to know the Bible. You have to be informed with God's instruction to know. You got to get this word in you. Get his spirit on you. You have to seek. Baptize you again and again and refresh you and restore you with this spirit. Amen. Because we're going to run into some challenges. Yeah. We're going to run into problems yeah. and obstacles in this life. And, and the who are we going to overcome these things? Information. And you're in a place where you all jacked at me and say, you know what? No, I'm just going. I'm just going. Keep on. Hallelujah. I know I, I, I don't quit before. Helping me out. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for helping me out. I had been embarrassing to be the only one to quit. Amen. Got this collar on up here. <laughs> but I was quick to repent. To find my way back. To be restored by the Spirit. The Spirit of God. Love in action. Amen. See, the Bible tells us the one thing about God. The Bible says that we love Him because He first loved us. Well, that, that shoots a lot of stuff in the foot about people talking about just you know falling in love with God. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it until you be first informed of his love for you. And then, but we have to show up. Chapter 11, First Corinthians chapter 11. This is what's called the love feast in the early church, the first century church. The love feast. Well, the saints of God will come together and they would have a, have a house of fellowship. And they will bring, they will all bring stuff. See, well, our traditions are informed by the word. Yeah. And they would bring things and they would, you, you know, they would eat and they would hang out and they would talk. And, you know, over here, they, over here they're talking about, you know, their encounter with Christ, their encounter with the Bible. And one may be talking about, you know, um, another but they have all type of different things going on in this house of fellowship. They would they, they would they would inspire and motivate one in godliness and righteousness and right living. Hallelujah. And one of the events that took place in this house of fellowship was the breaking of bread of communion. So everybody would bring their own their own food, everybody would contribute something, and um, they would have a, a, a time when they would break bread in communion and they would, they, would, they would show that we are the body of Christ. We, we, are, we, are, we are baked from the same love. We are one, one another. The same spirit that lives in you lives in me. I don't care if you ten dollars a month or you don't make a million in your lifetime. We're all and we're not separating based upon, you know, um, gender or race or, you know, class or all that kind of stuff. That, that don't separate us. We're one body. They all come together and they would break bread together. But you have some people who will bring more. And when they did, they let it be known. And they, they kind of parceled up their goods according to those who um, contributed. And it caused a, it caused a little dissension. Right. Had some issues. See, our issues, ain't nothing new. Go through the same stuff. 
Some of y'all be sitting at the door checking people out. I don't know what they're doing, huh? Did, did they bring the, um, I would say Lucky's, um, Albertsons, um, Kroger. Hey, man, they bring the Kroger brand or they bring name brand? What they, what, what they, huh? Checking bags, okay. What kind of bread? I don't eat that kind of bread. No, get, go back, get the, you know, you know, just checking everything everybody bringing, checking stuff out. <laughs> This, this, um, he says, for, um, for you suffer, um, I'm in Second Corinthians. Y'all passed that test. Good job. Amen. Just want to make sure that y'all y'all doing what's right. Amen. Thank you, my love. All right. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Um, when you come together into one place, this is this is not to eat the Lord's supper, other his own supper. You know um, differences that one person said uh, they hungry because you know they didn't they didn't bring anything you know they weren't allowed to participate and the other one brought so much they done got drunk. Amen. So he's, he's showing two different extremes and 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 what's going on. Um, verse twenty one: For in eating, everyone um, everyone taketh before other his his own supper and. So you 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 flaunting all of what God has blessed you with, mm-hmm. while somebody ain't got nothing, on, and you're not coming together as one body. You're not love in action. You're not supporting one another and building one another the way Christ told us to. Right. But but you but you're just all the goodness you have in life. Mm-hmm. While somebody don't have anything to drink at all, you drunk. While somebody don't don't have anything to eat, you stuffed and full and patting your belly. It's not the love of God. It's not the love feast that God has called us to have with one another. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens. See? Amen. Um, Be You know, touching my windows and everything.
He's showing us how we ought to be sacrificing Christ and loving like Christ. That we are to be the word becoming flesh to one another. We ought to be this, this actuated word, this life-giving word for one another. And that we're not, you know, now I'm not saying that, you know, some people will come around and they'll look bad and sorry to try to get, you know, extra bite, you know. And then, I should. All right. You know, can you chew that? <laughs> no, not for you. You know, <laughs> we we gonna get you some dentures. Man, I got some. I got some. What's that stuff you you, you glue your dentures in with? Uh, Polydent. Amen. Okay. So somebody's dent. Amen. Put a dent in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or, or a blender. <laughs> And, and, and you got to find that healthy balance between that two. You know, you got to find that, that the healthy balance of being there for each other and not being selfish in your own heart and taking and love stuff because they have, and want them to give you their stuff because they have more. And this American economy, get out there and, you know, work. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, and, and look, ain't no shame in an honest day's work. None. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, but but having that healthy balance, you know, where those who are working their best and still don't have enough, man, the church needs to be there Amen. and support Amen. and un and supply. Yeah. Amen. That house, Amen. those people, and, and and those who don't have enough need to be careful to guard what they do have and, and guard the gifts of others. Amen. And lived out properly. To get the saints because this is what is sharpened and honed. Is what he's telling them. You, know, you have these problems, but the this. Amen. I'm going to move real quickly. If you look at um, chapter 12, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, for as And so um, I want you to see that you got to get the body around. You need the body. to. You can't have, you know, the eye saying to the foot because I'm not the foot. I you have no need of me and I'm not the ear, you know, and, and you know, you, you can't get into those controversies. We have to support and build and stand with one another. We're better when we're working together. My ears are better when my eyes are involved. Amen. Praise God. My, my, my hands are better. My feet are involved. Now, now all It's the whole body together that works together that makes the whole thing work. This is, this is the word because out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you all around the world from every kindred, coming together as one people who were no people. You have made a people and you have made us the people of God. Father, your body has provided the means by which we come together. 
And your word has provided the means by which we understand the body. Father, we thank you for your word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. And that your word lived out prophecy. That we may continue to live out prophecy called the church. Father, help us get better at being the church. Whether or not we get better at having church, help us get better at being church. And being a church that you can delight yourself in, that you can be proud of, a, a, a church that you can see and smile upon. Help us, Father God, to love not our lives even unto death. Help us, Father God, to not love the world, but to love one another and to, and to exalt one another, exalt the lowly, hallelujah, and give grace to the humble. Father, help us to be your Help us to live like your people. Help us to walk in the grace and the mercy that's predestined unto those that are called upon the, the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your prophecy that, that as to how to live and how to move and have a being. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word that comes in a form of prophecy that teaches us about the days that we are living in and how we are to conduct ourselves in these last and evil days. Thank you, Father God, for your word that builds us up. Hallelujah. In our most holiest faith, even as we pray in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your word informing us how to have families, how to work, how to have church, how to be a part of this beautiful and wonderful body of Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for all you have done for us. We thank you, Father God, for those things that you shall do, God, as we give ourselves to being your living word, hallelujah, and living out prophecy. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring to pass what you have said. Thank you, Father God, for giving us the opportunity of lending you our hands, our feet, our eyes, our ears, our, 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 our necks, our, our heads, our toes, our, our knees, our organs. Thank Thank you, God, for giving us opportunity of, of giving you these um, members of our body as a member of your body, holy, sanctified, pure, justified by the eternal Father. Father, may your word continue to be exercised in us. This world has yet to see a church totally given over to the Holy Ghost. And we are determined to be that church. Help us, Lord God, to love one another like you loved us, that we may continue to fulfill your will and do your biddings, that the whole world may see how great is our God. And for this, we thank and praise you for in Jesus' name. Amen.